along with the many other currently unexplained feats of engineering present within the ancient ruins of Baalbek's temples, is undoubtedly the variety of ancient stones that were somehow incorporated into the structures. Although modern academia, and indeed its supporters, who are all seemingly suffering with selective research syndrome, claim that Baalbek is a Roman ruin, we feel, as mentioned, the sheer size of the ancient megaliths that were installed masterfully into its construction are obviously far too large for our Roman ancestors to have transported from distant quarries and who have installed into the structure. We are more than open to this proposition that they were indeed installed and built by Romans, if we can be provided with one single logical explanation as to how this was done. But, as of yet, this remains elusive, absent any academic explanation as to the site. As mentioned, the astonishing array of ancient stones is also an area that is rarely covered by individuals attempting to convey an air of all-knowing to the masses, as these features are, just like the enormous megaliths present at the site, currently unexplainable. Specifically, it's the pink granite columns. The reason for our focus on these particular stones is the fact that this pink granite is only available at one known ancient quarry, that being the famous quarry of Aswan, located within modern-day Egypt, an astonishing 1,500 kilometers away. Some of these stones, weighing in at more than 10 metric tons, this achievement, we feel, is clear indication of the fact that the builders of these ancient sites were far more capable than that of our more recent Roman ancestors. For example, as previously covered on our channel, Henri Layard brought two Lamassu weighing in at a similar size around 10 tons to London. This task took over 18 months of arduous suffering for hundreds of our modern ancestors, placed a mere century ago to complete. It included several near disasters, and included loading them onto wheeled carts, complex systems of modern pulleys and levers operated by dozens of men, the utilization of over 300 men in total, a barge, and a custom-built ramp to haul them up the steps and into the museum. How these same curators, historians, and academics alike can continue to claim that our Roman ancestors completed such tasks along with the placement of such enormous stone megaliths, is to us absurd. Was the unfinished obelisk found within Aswan the work of the same civilization? We feel that these pink granite columns could in all possibility be a link that connects these two ancient sites, and in particular, the Great Pyramids. Was Baalbek, with its enormous granite megaliths, built by the same people as the Great Pyramids? Is the giant megalithic exoskeleton of the Great Pyramids, which we have already exposed, built with the same techniques as Baalbek? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Jordan, a precious area of our planet with a number of jewels still surviving from what we claim as a lost antiquity. Baalbek. With megaliths which, if not in perfect placements, would simply be unimaginable as the ancient objects used to create these enormous temple complexes, littered with numerous blocks estimated at well over 1,000 tons in size. It is a site whose explanation for construction is, predictably, avoided by modern archaeology. Although once dismissed by academics as immovable, the stone of the pregnant woman, for example, has since, due to more modern digging, been proven to, in fact, be merely a block part of another temple, which is now still mostly buried under millennia of strata. Another incredible find, and one that pushes the sizes of what these ancient civilizations were capable of, is an enormous stone upart, known as the Colossal Hand of Hercules. Excavated in Amman, and due to the find's proximity to what is now known as the Temple of Hercules, it is now thought to have been a hand of a gargantuan marble statue of Hercules himself. 
However, regardless of identity, when one begins to estimate the past size of the statue in relation to the hand, the statue itself would have been many, many thousands of tons in weight, undoubtedly towering into the sky. There exist many legends of statues built in many other parts of the world, some in docklands, some in capital ancient cities, some toppled, such as the obelisk of Aksum, again over the thousand tons in weight mark, and many unfinished. Yet this statue would have dwarfed all in size. And the fact that it was found in Jordan, a boiling pot for unexplained antiquity. A simply gigantic stone megalithic site, its discovery is made all the more intriguing and we feel can be legitimately used to argue or rather push the capability of this lost civilization's capabilities of moving ancient stones even more advanced and astonishing in capability. Unfortunately, we feel due to the sheer age of the statue and the fact that it lived through a catastrophe of global proportions, only this fragment of hand and a portion of the elbow exists, subsequently found at the site. But reiterating the sheer size of other artifacts at the site, again gives credence to the past existence of a complete statue, and regardless of whether it was indeed once of the mythological character Hercules. We find the hand, and indeed its possible origins, as highly compelling. There are many astonishing ancient structures located within India. Arguably, some of the most intricately detailed structures to be found anywhere on Earth. We have, in the past, covered a number of these structures, not only due to the astonishing detail displayed upon their stonework, but also many other compelling enigmatic details that, to this day, remain unexplained. A personal recommendation for an alternative archaeological researcher of Indian ruins is Praveen Mohan over at Phenomenal Travel Videos. Yet, due to the countless ancient anomalies that can be found within India, we rarely step on each other's proverbial feet. For example, during my own personal research, I have not only found that many of the hillside temples, seemingly hewn from the bedrock of Earth, would even to this day be incredibly difficult to replicate, if not impossible. With some of the most astonishing, not only attached to religious belief and historical rumor to a mountain in the Himalayas, a factor we have also previously covered, with my personal observations, regardless of the fact that many locals pertain to it being an ancient pyramid, discovered noticeable evidence of the entire base of the mountain, once having been hewn into an artificial crescent. Also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone, slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone. End quote. With the stone quarried out to create the astonishing temples, an accepted artistic masterpiece, just like Yongyu Cave in China, have never been found. Additionally, during my own pursuit for clues as to how and indeed who could have created such temples, I have identified signature tool marks in several areas that match that of many other ancient ruins, indeed such as Yangshan Quarry, also in China. Providing strong evidence that whoever was responsible for these ruins may have indeed been the same civilization, or as our Atlantean videos have postulated, were commanded to be constructed by a dominant civilization, sharing such technologies with the native populations, employing them to create such wonders. Thus, this would also explain the matching signatures of advanced stone-cutting tool marks found on different continents. Like our research into the variation into ancient stone clamps, a method that was undeniably shared throughout the globe, yet the methods of creating such clamps and the resulting metallurgy varies from continent to continent. As we have previously stated on many occasions, 
whoever was responsible for these incredible ancient sites, seemingly vanished at some point within antiquity, leaving many ancient quarries and temples unfinished. One of the temples that we use to link the tool marks with other sites around the world, Vetivan Coil. One of the precious, abandoned sites that like so many other ancient advanced ruins that were being built around the world, vitally shows the rough stone-cutting signatures left by an advanced machinery that was once responsible for their initial cutting, this before the refinement of such structures' carvings. With many other sites in India that due to their geographical positioning and thus protection from erosion, still possesses these same signature tool marks. However, the purpose of today's video is probably one of the most peculiar anomalies in India, and could be perceived by some as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of advanced ancient machinery having once been responsible for these ancient structures. Known as the Tanjore Brihadiswarar Temple, which was supposedly constructed by the Cholas, However, the temple possesses a characteristic which was not only out of the capabilities of the Chola's dynasty, but to me, is compelling proof of a pre-Diluvian civilization having been responsible for its construction. As atop the temple, at a height of 216 feet above ground level, is a solid lump of granite carved with perfection, yet has been realized at an astonishing weight of 80 tons. To put that in perspective, according to academia, an ancient culture with no advanced technologies, especially lifting technologies, a dynasty well studied and explored by modern academia. The heartland of the Cholas was the fertile valley of the Kaveri River. Although their power was considerable and was probably complemented by such claimed of astonishing feats of architecture, regardless, the question remains. How did this civilization raise such an enormous stone? It seems to us that such claims were merely made to impress their enemies and allies, and the fact that academia is severely lacking any explanation as to how such a feat was accomplished strongly supports my suspicion that the temple is in fact an antediluvian ruin, and as such, highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.